Oh my god. Yep. Let's do this. Here in Australia, the internet leaves a lot to be desired. Therefore, I have had the absolute pleasure of becoming very well acquainted with this dinosaur game. For those of you who are fortunate enough not to know, Google Chrome has a hidden dinosaur game which you can play when the internet is down. So I decided to conquer this game in the name of all of those who feel the frustration of experiencing the Aussie internet. Now, as per usual, first I need to make the game. Okay, first up, we need to add the player Dino Dude, and at this stage in the game, he's just a rectangle who can jump. Mm, there she is, solid game, Evan. Oh, <laughs> that's not good, doesn't even work. All right, after I fix that bug, it's time to add some obstacles for the Dino to jump over. And with some heavy reference from the game, I added some small cactuses. Okay, once I was happy with that, I added some other obstacles. And once they were looking good, I need to add some collision logic so that when you jump and hit a cactus, you die. Simple stuff. And yeah, I, uh, I did that. Okay, let's make it look pretty. I drew up some sprites and chucked them in. I also fine-tuned the collisions so that they fit the sprites and match the original game. Okay, finally, I scaled everything up and wait for it. That's a bird. And if you're really good, you can duck under him. Woo, you're nice. Okay, game is done. Now let's get to the bit you guys have been waiting for, the AI. Each generation contains 500 players, each controlling a dinosaur. Classic genetic algorithm. So the players which do the best live on to reproduce and the same thing for the next generations and rinse and repeat until you have a bloody beast. The first few generations is just the players holding down the jump button, which is a decent strategy if you suck. And as you can imagine, at this point, it's just about luck. They don't care about where the obstacles are. They're just hoping they match up with their jumping cycles. This continues for quite a few generations. Now we're talking. This guy finally has the patience to wait until the next obstacle is close enough before jumping. If you look at the neural network at the top, you can see that it uses the distance to the next object to calculate when to jump. All right, let's speed this up because these games get long. Now this guy's pretty good, but not foolproof. There are two ways in which this guy can die. First, since the game is constantly speeding up, the player can jump too late and get hit. The second way is the bird. Basically, there are three levels of birds. The highest flying bird cannot be jumped over, so the AI needs to learn to duck, which is inevitably what kills this player. What is interesting about Generation 8 is you can see the genetic algorithm at work. Each player is slightly mutated from its parents of the previous generation. This can be expressed as jumping slightly earlier or later. That's why you see the players slightly separate when they jump. I don't know, I find it interesting, but I'm a nerd, so... Okay, at this point, I left and crushed some lunch, and when I came back, this had happened. Yeah, we missed most of the evolution. But thankfully, since I'm a genius programmer, I included a module to replay the highlights of the evolution, showing the best player of the generation. Let's check it out. You've already seen generation one through eight, so we can skip them. The next solid evolution highlight wasn't till generation 25, when the AI finally learned to duck which means the only way it can die is from the game speeding up. This player jumps way too late, so it didn't last very long.
the players slowly evolved to perfect this over time, and the best game happened at generation 40. This guy is a solid player. I'm going to skip forward in the game because otherwise this game goes for like 16 minutes, which I know your guys' attention span does not account for. So this is like six minutes in and the game is already moving at ridiculous speeds. Skipping forward again to about 10 minutes in. Okay, one more time skip. We're at 15 minutes in. It's just stupid quick at this point. Each obstacle is only on the screen for like a couple of frames, but it's still managing to jump over them somehow. I get a lot of messages from people who are inspired to learn to code, but have no idea where to start. Having not studied coding at all in your life and hearing terms like algorithms and neural networks can be daunting at first, but fret no more. A good place to start learning the logic and theory behind coding is brilliant.org. They have a bunch of courses teaching you the fundamentals of computer science for those of you who are new to the field. Each course is interactive and breaks up complicated concepts into bite-sized chunks to make sure you actually absorb the information, a strategy which I wish was used for my three-hour university lectures. I'm going to start doing some tutorials explaining how my AIs learn and think in the following weeks. I will try to make them pretty simple and low-level, but I'll be expecting at least a basic understanding of coding and algorithms. After all, I will be explaining the genetic algorithm to you. And contrary to popular belief, that is in fact an algorithm. So an understanding of what an algorithm is and some basic knowledge would be rather helpful. Head over to brilliant.org slash codebullet to check out a bunch of their free courses. And the first 200 people who use this link will get a whopping 20% off the annual subscription. So if you want to learn some computer science and support yours truly at the same time, then it would mean a lot if you could go and check them out.